Look around you. Chances are you are wearing, holding, or looking at something that's been imported. Very likely your jeans and the technology inside your phone come from a foreign country. They are imported goods and services. Trade is part of our lives. It's what makes the world go round. But in today's world, trade is becoming more complex as more and more countries join the global economy. Imagine this complex trading network without common rules. It would be like a busy day on the road without traffic lights. That's where the WTO comes in. Created in 1995, it expands on a system for trade among nations, built over six decades. But what has the WTO achieved since its creation? The WTO is stability. Its thousands of pages of rules are the traffic signs for exchanges between nations. They help companies operate across borders. Companies know that a country belonging to the WTO will be fair with imports. No big surprises. But where do these rules come from? From our members, the governments that make up the WTO. Together, they negotiate new rules for trade and new space for imported goods and services. Rules are agreed by consensus. You only apply rules once you've agreed upon them with your trading partners. Negotiations sometimes focus on just one sector. And shortly after the WTO's creation, it successfully completed a number of agreements. However, negotiations can also cover a wide variety of different issues. For example, the Doha Development Agenda. Launched in 2001, it seeks to reduce trade barriers and improve rules for trade in goods, services, and more. It also seeks to rebalance the system in favor of developing countries. Reaching an agreement with such wide-ranging implications takes time. In 2008, members got close to a deal in major areas, but there was no consensus on every single topic. So the work continues and the objective remains the same, to update the trading system for the 21st century. It's good to have rules, but if you don't respect them, they're of no use. The WTO helps countries resolve their trade disputes. This helps build a stable trading world. When a country thinks a trading partner is breaking a rule, it can submit a complaint to the dispute system. This WTO innovation has proved very effective. The first step is to talk, and about half the cases are solved out of court. But what if there is no solution? Countries can ask a panel to review their cases and lodge an appeal if they are still not satisfied. Still no resolution? Countries can seek to apply sanctions against those not playing by the rules. Stability. Rules designed by all, applied by all. More and more countries are becoming involved in negotiations or disputes because more and more countries are now part of the global economy. The WTO is about participation, and because decisions are taken by consensus, newcomers to the trading game quickly find their position in the organization. Today, more than two-thirds of all WTO members are developing countries, and more are joining. During the first 15 years of the WTO, 25 countries or territories became members and about 30 more are preparing to join. From day one, everyone has the same rights a voice in the consensus, a place at the table, and a stable trading system. That alone doesn't ensure the benefits of trade. A brand new car doesn't take you anywhere if you don't know how to drive or don't have any fuel. For developing countries, problems can be lack of good roads and ports, standards in rich markets, even poor preparation for negotiations. That's why the WTO oversees the Aid for Trade initiative. It means putting aid money from different sources to work for the economy, to improve infrastructure. The WTO coordinates and monitors this work with other international actors. Participation. More members, more voices. Moving towards a global and more balanced WTO. With a growing number of participants, transparency becomes vital. At the WTO, it starts with the countries. Each of our members informs their trading partners about any changes in trade policy that may affect them. And every few years, 
They each answer questions from other countries about their global trade policy. But transparency goes beyond governments. That information is available to everyone. Businesses, the civil society, the general public, those that make trade happen, including you. Transparency is crucial in times of crisis. As the recession hit, the WTO examined closely its impact on trade. Good, timely information helped governments to keep protectionism at bay. Transparency. Free and open exchange of information for healthier trade. Some critics of trade and globalization have sought to make WTO activities more accessible. So, the WTO has become more open. Openness means promoting debate, listening, reaching out. The annual public forum is an opportunity for debate with the civil society. Since 2001, the WTO has been inviting critics and supporters alike to organize public discussions about trade. The WTO has also opened up its day-to-day -day life and invites the public to follow dispute hearings if the countries involved want to take that step. Being more open also means putting trade in context. By cooperating with other institutions, the WTO gains a better understanding of how trade impacts on and benefits other areas. The environment, for example, is now part of negotiations, and the WTO has been active in research on how trade and climate change interact. Being open also means opening one's doors. Once a year, the WTO invites the public to look at the place where their governments negotiate, solve disputes, and share information. Openness. Connecting the WTO with the outside world. Negotiating. Solving disputes. Sharing information. Opening doors. Who would think a pair of jeans would require so much work? The world is now more connected. Things change faster. More players, concerns about the environment, development challenges. These factors have an impact on how trade flows. Amidst all that, the WTO represents stability, participation, transparency, and openness in this complex world.